Today I'm going to show you how to make these flower headbands using a circular knitting machine. This project was inspired by my previous tutorial, How to Knit a Flower Bouquet. When I showed the bouquet to my husband, he thought they would look cute on a headband, so I gave it a try and I loved how they turned out. The pattern I'm showing you today is sized to fit an older child or an adult, but you can easily adapt the pattern to make it smaller or larger. These headbands measure approximately 8.5 to 9 inches wide by 5.5 inches tall. The whole process took me about an hour. I knit the pieces in about 30 minutes, and it took another 30 minutes to seam the headband and assemble and attach the flower. If you use this pattern, please tag me on social media when you share the project. At Diana Levine Knits on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, Etsy, and Ravelry. And if you'd like to check out any of my knitting machine books, templates, and patterns, including the printable version of my flower bouquet pattern, visit dianalevinenets.com. I'm working on lots more fun knitting machine tutorials coming soon, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all my latest projects. All the supplies I'm using today are linked in the description below. For this project, I'm using a 40 needle circular knitting machine, a 48 needle circular knitting machine, and a 22 needle circular knitting machine. I'm using loops and threads impeccable yarn in the colors lavender, soft rose, and sunny day, as well as some hair elastics, a crochet hook, a darning needle, a pair of scissors, some stuffing, and a couple of knitting tags. We'll be knitting the headband in three pieces, the headband, the outside of the flower, and the inside of the flower. We'll begin by knitting the headband. To begin, cast onto a 40 needle circular knitting machine using scrap yarn. Wrap your yarn around the first needle and then weave the yarn back and forth along the needles until the end of the row. When you finish the row, place your yarn into the middle tensioner. We'll be removing this yarn at the end so the color doesn't matter, just make sure it contrasts well with the main color, which will make it easier to seam at the end. Knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish the 5 rows, cut a tail in the scrap yarn and throw it into the middle of the machine. Then cut a long tail in the main color yarn because we'll need to use the tail later to seam up the headband and place it right next to the scrap yarn tail. Hold them close and low as you slowly begin to knit your first row in the main color. Knit 90 rows in the main color. If you want a wider headband, knit a few more rows. If you want a smaller headband for a younger child, knit less rows. Do keep in mind that the headbands will stretch out a bit over time, so I would err on the side of smaller rather than larger. For this demonstration, I'm using a knitting machine adapter. If you decide to try using an adapter, please make sure to carefully read the safety instructions for both the adapter and the screwdriver. When you finish your 90 rows, cut a long tail in the main color and throw it in the middle of the machine. Then switch back to the scrap yarn and knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. When you finish the 5 rows, cut a tail and crank the machine until your work falls off the needles. Pull the work off the machine and gently stretch out the stitches. Set aside this piece for now while we knit the flower pieces. Next, we'll knit the outside of the flower. Switch to the 48 needle knitting machine and cast on using a scrap yarn in the same way we did for the headband. Knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. After 5 rows, cut a short tail in your yarn and throw it into the machine. Then cut a really long tail in the flower color yarn and throw it into the middle of the machine with the two tails right next to each other. You'll need a really long tail at least a few feet to sew the flower at the end. Hold the two tails close together and low as you begin to knit the project. For the flower, knit 20 rows in your main color. After you finish 20 rows, cut another long tail in the main color and switch back to the scrap yarn. Knit 5 rows in the scrap yarn. After 5 rows, cut a short tail and crank your machine until the work falls off the needles. Gently stretch out your stitches and put the work aside while we get started knitting the inside of the flower. Switch to a 22 needle circular knitting machine. Unlike our first two parts, we won't be using scrap yarn for the center. Instead, use a yellow or orange yarn and cast on directly with the main color. Follow the same procedure as before, weaving the yarn back and forth along the first row and then begin knitting. Knit 13 rows in the main color. When you finish 13 rows, cut a long tail in the yarn and use a darning needle to pick up all the stitches off the needles. When you finish the row, pull the work off the machine and cinch one side closed with the tail yarn. We just finished knitting all three pieces needed to make our flower headbands. Next, we'll seam the headband. Bring the two open sides of the tubes together and thread one of the long yarn tails onto a darning needle. Line up the top loops of your main collar on top of each other. Use your darning needle to thread the yarn through all four loops that are lined up, two from the bottom and two from the top. I'll show you a little closer to see which stitches I'm threading the yarn through. Continue threading back and forth, going down one set of stitches and then up the next set of stitches, and repeat until the end of the row. You don't need to pull the yarn tightly when you're seaming. You can seam it loosely and at the end we'll tighten it up. As you work, continue to roll out the insides of the tubes to make sure you're catching all the stitches. When you get to the end of the row, there will be two stitches left. Bring your yarn through both stitches. Next, remove the scrap yarn. You'll remove the scrap yarn by pulling it off around and around the tube. Once you've removed your scrap yarn, gently pull the yarn tail to cinch the headband together. 
Turn the headband inside out and tie the two yarn tails together tightly a few times. After your knots are secure, thread the yarn tails onto a needle and weave in the ends into the interior area of the headband. Set aside the headband for now while we assemble the flower. I'm going to walk you through the process quickly today, but if you'd like to see this at a slower pace, please visit my How to Knit a Flower Bouquet tutorial linked in the description below. Begin by turning the work inside out with the V-shaped stitches now on the inside. Use a scrunchie to wrap around the center, and then line up the top loops on top of each other. Use a crochet hook to seam the edge. Bring your crochet hook through the first bottom loop, and then pull through the top loop, followed by the top loop to the left, then pull through the next loop on the bottom. Continue in this pattern, alternating between top and bottom loops until approximately one and a half inches before you finish the row. When you're about one and a half or two inches away from the end of the row, lightly stuff the flower. For this project, you really don't want to overstuff it because it will feel too heavy on the headband. Use a very minimal amount, just enough to give it some volume, and use your finger to push it down through the entire flower. When you finish stuffing, finish seaming the edge and pull the yarn tail through the last loop. Then tie a knot between the two yarn tails and remove the scrap yarn from both sides. You'll now have a circular shape. To create the flower shape, sew in lines from the outside of the flower to the inside, then cinch the area down to the inside ring, wrap the yarn around once, and secure with a knot. Then weave the yarn through to the next section and repeat the same process, sewing in a line up to the outside and then threading the yarn back through to the inside, wrapping the yarn around once and securing with a knot. Repeat this until you have five sections which will create the five petals. When you're done, leave the long yarn tails out because we'll use those later to attach the flower. Next, we'll assemble the inside of the flower. Grab your yellow work and secure the cinch side with a knot. Then use a tiny amount of stuffing to fill the work. Again, you don't want to overstuff, just a minimal amount. Then use the other yarn tail to cinch it closed and secure with a knot. Then use the needle again to bring the yarn tail from one side to the other and secure the two tails with a knot. Next, push the inside of the flower into the outside until you like how it looks. Then use the yarn tails to sew the inside to the outside, going through a couple of stitches on the inside and then a couple of stitches on the outside part and continue until you reach the end. Tie a knot to secure the two yarn tails, and then you can weave in the ends from the yellow yarn. Next, place your flower over the cinched area of the headband and wrap the two yarn tails around to the back. Turn the headband inside out and tie the yarn tails together tightly a couple of times. Next, to ensure that the flower is attached well, wrap the yarn tails back around a couple of times more, going through the flower each time before securing again in the back with a few knots. Then weave your ends into the center part of the work. Lastly, I always like to add a knitting tag to my work, and I'll link in the description below to where I order my tags. Our flower headbands are complete. If you make this project, please tag me at Diana Levine Knits on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, Ravelry, and Etsy. And check out all my knitting machine templates, patterns, books, and tutorials at dianalevinenits.com. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel for lots more fun, quick and easy knitting patterns and tutorials.